it is as old as time. From prehistory to the 21st century, the enormous power of the bow and the precise accuracy of the arrow have been part of the human story. The universal weapon of the primeval hunt and traditional warfare has evolved into one of the world's most evocative and demanding sports, archery. illustrates our history. It reveals our human qualities. It reflects our dreams and aspirations. Its demands of mind and body are metaphors for the challenges of life. Its harmony and elegance are things of beauty. and precision, strength and subtlety, passion and perseverance, dedication and devotion, intensity and integrity. Archery, the ultimate sporting challenge. Dear friends, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. It's a great honor for me to be here at the Sports Innovation Summit to talk about the modernization of an Olympic sport because there is greater need than ever for sport organizations to adapt and evolve. In our fast-changing world, sport faces growing competition to capture the attention and the imagination of the public. Games consoles, smartphones, tablets, all play an increasingly central role in people's lives. Particularly young people who in rising numbers are living sedentary lifestyles as we heard yesterday as well. This is part of what Olympic Agenda 2020 is looking to address and you probably heard that the IOC executive board met some days ago to talk about that. The IOC is taking a proactive role in redefining and the future shape of the Olympic movement and how it can maintain and reinforce its position in the modern world. I will give some examples today of how we change certain things and how we innovate it. It is not just the responsibility of the IOC to instigate change or to modernize. It's all of our roles. While advancements in technology can present challenges to sports, if harnessed correctly, they open up vast possibility. It is our ability to embrace change, to, uh, to identify challenges facing our sports and find creative solutions to overcome them. We are in an increasingly competitive market and we need to target young people. That is fundamental to, instirring, to ensure we stay relevant and fundamental to attracting new participants and new fans around the world. Archery is one of the world's ancient sports, as we just saw in the video. But we have a strong history of innovation. We have to embrace change. We have to identify the challenges. We have to find creative solutions. We have to stay relevant. And we have to attract new participants and fans, as we heard yesterday, for instance, very well in the presentation on your traditional forms of wrestling. So, 
What did we do, for instance, in the last few years? We had a problem. Every arrow in a match was added together, and sometimes there was a lack of unpredictability, but even worse, there were few upsets, and the audience disengaged if there was a bad arrow. So we had to find a solution. What did we do? And you can see one of the Mexican athletes doing it here. We introduced the set system. Head-to-head -head set system for Olympic recurve competition. Every arrow mattered because every three arrows you were starting from scratch and you had to again win against your opponent. What was the result? A much more dynamic competition, more upsets. Some of our athletes didn't like that always. More unpredictability and matches contested to the last arrow. At the London Olympic Games, both semi-finals in the men went to a shoot-off and the bronze medal match as well. Unfortunately for the one that finished fourth, he lost both of them. So the crowds love it, the athletes show much more expression and this helps to make great entertainment. Other thing we did, another problem we had was in terms of production of our TV images. What was the problem? A variety of production quality, lack of consistency, especially in terms of showing our sponsors, the cost and an uneven buy-in from the host broadcasters, and sometimes, since it was every time different, an unprofessional perception. So, what did we do? We developed what we call Archery TV, a dedicated television crew, state-of-the-art equipment, but since we are, I would say, a smaller Olympic Federation, we have to look at costs, so we have to find and create innovative solutions. And we'll hear later, as far as I understand, on some of the innovative solutions that might be available to sports like us. And we distribute through our World Archery YouTube channel, which has broken 20 million views and has close to 50,000 subscribers, and satellite broadcast, of course, through the more traditional means. This is one of our cameramen. Sorry, one too quick. Here's our YouTube channel, where you can find all the productions we've done over the last few years, and which is often referred to by YouTube as one of the IFs uh, as an example to follow. So what was the impact? We have a consistent high quality production, consistent delivery and signal, no surprises for the broadcasters and the sponsors. We have an experienced team, and what is very important is that our athletes know the team. So our athletes are not afraid from a camera movement, and the cameras can move much more freely than in the past, which gives better images. And the athletes know they can trust them, they will not make movements while they're at full draw and aiming. Adaptability and cohesiveness in event delivery, because our organizers also want to make sure that things happen well. An environment conductive to further innovation. Every year, at the end of the year, we make an evaluation and we say, okay, what worked, what didn't work? What happened at the Olympics? Can we use one more camera like we did at the Olympics? Unfortunately, we don't have the same budget, so the super slow motion, we can do only once or twice a year. But still, we find solutions. And sometimes, even Olympic broadcasting starts copying what we are doing. So it, I think we're doing on the right thing. Okay. One of the things we do as well is bring our sport to new venues. The Copenhagen Canal, I don't think that many of you would have thought this was an archery venue. It was a World Cup final venue. This is next to the Bosphorus in Turkey. The other thing we face as a challenge is that we are improving every year quite a lot. But what is happening at national level and at continental level? And we see a problem arising more and more between the gap what we are doing at world level and what is happening at national level. If you go to football, well, basically at national level, a football match looks quite similar 
than a Champions League or a FIFA World Cup. The only difference is it's a little bit more public. But if you look at the difference between our national events and what we are doing, it's quite big. So what we do, we created what we call an event toolbox for our member federations, which is something we are working on since more than two years. And what does it do? It allows a national federation to have a, a TV production at the level of a good streaming live signal or a good highlight level with an investment that is low because we will rent the equipment to them for a very low price. And they can run it with three, four people with some training. And they can even purchase it themselves and keep it for them for the future if they want. So what are we going to receive as a result of that? We empower our national federations to do better events because if they don't grow, at a certain moment, we can't grow further either. They can do a better production on a very small budget, and we create much more professional events. And we hope it will close the gap between World Archery and the national events, because we won't sit still either. We want to grow and get better as well. Another thing that is happening, and OK, it's not something we initiated, but one of the things we face is a lack of high-profile athletes. Now, in Mexico, you have two fantastic athletes, Aida Roman, Juan René Serrano. So it's less of an issue in Mexico. But in many countries, we have a lack of high-profile athletes. And this causes sometimes difficulty in attracting new fans and athletes. So what do we do? Hollywood loves archery, and more and more. So we want to see how we can be more present in the non-sport entertainment industry. So we see a lot of archery nowadays on the big screen. How do we do that? Well, basically, we help when there is, for instance, Jennifer Lawrence in the Hunger Games. She needs to do some archery. We'll make sure that she has a good coach. And we had Katuna Lorik. She's five times Olympian as her coach. We also had a coach helping with the Lord of the Rings production, The Hobbit, and so on and so on. Game of Thrones is also. So we tried to help them as much as possible. Another thing that was done was in France, they had a musical called Robin Hood. And one of their top pop stars was the lead character. So we made sure he knew how to shoot a bow and an arrow. And the French Federation took advantage of that and did a try archery at all of the productions and they had around 15,000 people trying archery just before they went into the show. So the impact, we see a much bigger interest globally. We connect archery with Hollywood stars, and we establish a connection between archery and the sport. And it creates a lot of exposure of our sport. I think we had so much questions since the start of the Hunger Games or Brave, you can't imagine. And I'm not going to make an advertisement for the next Hunger Games movie is soon. I'm not going to say when, but it's soon. You can find trailers with explosive arrows, apparently. So we try to see how we can have them serve as role models and increase participation level. Many people are asking me, how many more archers are there in the world because of the Hunger Games? I have no clue. But I'm sure it has a positive impact. And the archery trade associations are telling me that they're selling much more bows and arrows. So it must help. In conclusion, we need to create an innovative solutions. We cannot sit back as a sport that is not football. We need to think outside of the box. I'll give you an example that happened this week. In Philippines, which is not a big archery country, one guy in a club said, I want to break a world record. Now, I don't think he was the level of Aida Roman or Juan Rodríguez Serrano, so we had to find another solution. Well, what he did was he created the biggest ever archery class and the biggest archery ever competition. Now, to do that, he had to find again another solution. He said, OK, the record apparently at that time was 8,000 people for the competition. He says, I don't have 8,000 bows. So what did he do? He took PVC tubing and he made bows out of that. And guess what the record is? 14,000 people 
shop together a competition in the Philippines. This is creating outside of the box. So maybe this is an idea for Arno to, for the next Mexican challenge, is break the record, go for 15,000, because I'm sure in Mexico it's possible to break it. We have to embrace change, we can't sit back. Yes, we were upgraded as sport by the IOC after London. We are now part of the important Olympic sports. But that's not good enough. We need to do more and we need to continuously look at changes, continuously look at improvements and see how we can progress. And I will finish with this nice looking Mexican lady from Mexico, who is the silver medalist and who won this year our World Cup final in Lausanne. So we hope she will be in the same form next year when we come to Mexico City for our World Cup final. Thank you.